Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And for today's video, I have the one and only video I will be filming and devoting to the Sephora Spring Savings event, I think they're calling it. So basically the spring sale at Sephora where depending on your tier, you can get 10, 15 or 20% off. I'm sure you all know all of this already. Uh, so I'm not going to belabor that, but uh, my goal is to get this up by Monday, which is the last date of the sale. Uh, I know a lot of influencers have uploaded wish lists and recommendations and try on hauls and just hauls. And so I'm, I'm trying to kind of, I guess, give you as much information as I can in one video. Uh, and that's no shade to any other influencer who has filmed multiple videos. It's just that uh, personally, I haven't had the time uh, to do that. So uh, this is going to be my one shot at it. And I'm going to kind of go in reverse chronological order. I am wearing a lot of the products I will be talking about and I did film the application of those. Uh, so hopefully time permitting, I will be inserting application clips. Uh, but I figured that was kind of the best way of giving you as much information as I could. Uh, and so I'm going to start with the most recent order. So orders placed during the sale. And then I'm going to work my way backwards. So if at any point uh, you get bored or whatever and want to click out, I totally understand. So I think I'm going back to the end of February, which is when I uploaded my last Sephora haul. Uh, so some of those items are still relatively new and ones that you may be considering purchasing. Uh, and I will have links down below. So if you'd want a little bit of a kind of sneak peek into what I'm discussing. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that was the kind of easiest way for me to do it. So uh, speaking of reverse chronological order, I actually picked up two in-store purchases today. And uh, I remember uh, when I was studying abroad in London, I did a extended like spring break tour and I was kind of joking around to uh, my friends about how many different modes of transportation we were using, like plane, train, automobile, boat, you know, etc. Uh, and I think I've utilized almost every type of purchasing at Sephora throughout this haul. So uh, online orders, buy online, pick up in store, just straight up buying in store, uh, same day delivery. So um, I'll kind of, I guess, explain why I did various things. But anyway, uh, so for a couple of buy online, pick up in store purchases, uh, one thing I did want to note uh, with this one, I'll just start off with, uh, is that it's always worthwhile to check the sales section just to see if there's anything on your wish list. You can also check your, I guess, loves list is what they call it. But I find that the older items on my loves list tend to disappear. Uh, but anyway, it's always worth taking just a brief look through that sales section just to see if you can get an additional discount on any items already on sale. So. Uh, as I'll talk about in a moment, uh, from time to time, I like to do kind of brand focused videos. And so uh, Makeup by Mario is on that list. Uh, I don't plan to do that in the near future. It'll probably be, you know, after he does a friends and family sale or uh, the fall VIB or fall savings event, whatever it's called. Uh, but anyway, I saw this in the sales section and I got it for, I want to say $16, $17 after the discount and everything. Uh, but this was an item I'd kind of had my eye on, but I had never purchased, obviously. Uh, this is the Master Eye Prep and Set. And basically what you get is two kind of cream eye primers, and then you get a powder. So this product is not new, and it had been on sale before. So I wasn't sure if Mario was going to discontinue this product, but uh, it then went up to full price again. So I don't know if it's just a temporary sale thing. But anyway, I was curious about this product and I figured when I probably eventually do a Makeup by Mario full face, this will come in handy. Uh, I always use an eye primer and typically the primers I use are more kind of liquidy. Um, but as you'll see in the demo portion, hopefully, um, these do a good job of canceling out any discoloration of the eyelid. Um, I just use that lighter shade, which is a pretty good match for me. Uh, so I use that and then it also comes with a setting powder. And I generally do set my eyelid primer with a powder so that mattes blend easily on top of it. And 
it made sense to me to have a powder in you know the creams although hopefully the powder won't get into the creams because that's always a consideration but yeah it made sense to have this as kind of a complete eyelid primer kind of situation and yeah I did use this today and it doesn't look like a super bad powder kick up so hopefully hopefully that'll be okay uh, nice magnetic compact I seem to recall Jen Loves talking about this product, but I can't actually remember what she said about it. But anyway, I picked that up mostly because it was on sale. And then I also ordered an item that I had uh, shipped to me, but it arrived broken. And that is the House Labs Bronzer in Light Level 1. Uh, so I do plan to do a House Labs focused video in the near future. We're about to go to London on Thursday actually uh, for about 10 days. So it's probably not going to be like mid-May, late May at the earliest. So um, that will be coming. But yeah, I did pick up one of their bronzers uh, and I focused on... Let's go ahead and go into the order. I also had a same day delivery. And the, the funny thing about this was on uh, Greek Easter, which was a Sunday, uh, I had placed a same day delivery order that they then canceled because they said it was out of stock. And I did the thing where you check all your local stores to see if it was in stock. And there was only one Sephora that still had this shade and it was like in DC. And I didn't feel like going into DC for a blush. Uh, but yeah, they canceled that order and then a couple days later it was still showing up as available for same day delivery on the website. So I thought, you know, I'll go ahead and try it just to see if they fulfilled the order and lo and behold, they did. So I got the shade Hibiscus Haze in the blush and of course it already has my fingerprints on it. Uh, my husband was saying, you know, this would be so nice and, you know, elegant if it were made out of silver. And I'm like, yeah, but then it would probably cost like $200. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I got the kind of most neutral and I think this is the only shade that has sold out on the Sephora website. So I think it's the most wearable shade for most people and therefore has sold out. Uh, we did obviously go into Sephora today to pick up those orders and I did swatch a few other shades. They didn't have uh, Pomelo Peach available to test, but uh, the other shades I swatched were kind of the bright pink one and the red one. I forget if there was one other one. But yeah, those were definitely going to be more kind of bright and vibrant um, compared to what I typically like to wear. So that is going to work the best for me. So I focused on the House Labs products that are the most popular, I guess. So I got all of their powder products, basically. I got their bronzer, their blush, uh, two of their highlighters. And the reason I got two is... I had filmed a video dedicated to the Pantone color of the year for 2023, which is Viva Magenta. And for reasons I'm not going to go into now, I'm going to refilm that video. And I had identified a couple of the House Labs highlighters of having like magenta shifts, I guess you could say. And I had identified them, but I didn't think they would necessarily like work for me and the shades in these highlighters are kind of intimidating when you just look at the pictures and the swatches uh, I got was it rose quartz and I think pink amethyst yeah uh, so I went ahead and picked up two of these and I think I saw Taylor Wynn just talk about this rose quartz shade so these might still be more like blush toppers for me but those are the two shades and those are both described as having some kind of magenta aspect to them. So I decided uh, I'd go ahead and pick those up as kind of a, a twofer, if you will. Uh, and on the subject of, I guess, picking up products for videos, <laughs> uh, I just filed my taxes last Monday. I just, I just want to put this in perspective because obviously I don't make a living from YouTube. Uh, I do make some money from AdSense. I think I just got my, my check from Google for January through March and it was like $120. Uh, and I also get, you know, some affiliate link money, which I tend to generate myself just because, you know, I buy things. Uh, but my husband and I both work 
full time. We both have professional jobs and I'll just say that I'm operating this channel at a loss and it actually works out to our benefit in terms of tax liability for me to buy a lot of makeup if I can, you know, write it off as a YouTube expense. So anyway, just to put it in perspective, like no one, no one should kind of aspire to buying as much makeup as I'm about to show you. Um, anyway, so this is the bronzer that arrived broken, unfortunately. I got a refund for it. They said they weren't able to reship it, which did make sense because it was still in stock on the website, but I think I might try, I bought that like fixy makeup, like fixer <laughs> system uh, a while ago and I've never used it. I also had a, a Shock to Kai highlighter that arrived broken at one point, so I think I'm probably gonna hold on to this and just see if I can use that product to fix it. More just to, I guess, try out the product than to actually use this bronzer again. Uh, but because I did then purchase the, you know, unbroken one, I should be able to compare performance between the non-broken one and the broken one that's been fixed. So anyway, um, that's kind of on my long-term docket, if you will. So if I get to a slow stretch and, and makeup releases or whatever, um, I'll probably do that. Uh, also got their loose powder. I've heard Khaki say good things about this. And I think at one time, Teresa's Dead also liked this one, although I think she recommended the Rare Beauty powder in her recommendations video. Uh, I'm not always the biggest fan of loose powder. I do like that this one has the kind of stopper in the cap that comes down. And this little, obviously you remove this. Yeah, so this one has like the net kind of style dispenser as opposed to the holes in it. Uh, so yeah, I'll be trying that as well. It has a very satisfying click to it. I like that. And then finally from House Labs, I got their foundation. So I got the shade 15 Fair Warm. And I think we've all kind of come to understand what House Labs was doing with their shade names because I am not a fair warm in most products. I'm more neutral leaning cool. Uh, and I did swatch this at one point in store. Uh, I swatched the like pure white shade, which was like, it actually looked pretty white. But I think Hannah Louise Poston, who obviously has some pigmentation to her skin, uh, she I think had used the, the white. Okay, so you take the cap off. I'm just going to quickly kind of check the shade. It has a very heavy glass bottle. Still kind of reminds me of like those 18th century gowns. So yeah, I think I'd swatch this in store. I think that should be a pretty decent match. We'll see how it looks when it's kind of sheared out. Uh, but just looking at the pictures of the model, it seemed like that would be a good match. And I think honestly, I would rather go too light than too dark because I can always kind of warm things up with bronzer and everything. Uh, and I am wearing a different foundation that I tried today that did make me look like a bit of a, a crypt keeper at first, but I think, I think now everything together kind of looks good. And then just a couple samples. I got the Seven Virtues Vanilla Woods. I've gotten a sample of this before, but you know, I just grab whatever they have. And then I was interested to see that Makeup Forever had the Reboot Foundation in their uh, options. And that is one of my favorite foundations, kind of go-to products. It's down to there in the bottle. I was just kind of curious to see kind of what they said about it. I haven't seen them kind of promote this product in a while. Uh, I wear the shade R208 in this. And it looks like most of the lighter shades here are like Y. Or yellow so as far as shade matching this isn't very helpful but I was just curious to see what they said about it it said revive your complexion instantly and over time with the most effective combination of makeup and skincare I don't really consider this like a skincare type product um, but it is just a nice kind of lightweight foundation good for dry skin so that is my shade right there. Uh, so that was it for the house labs and I kind of divided what I was purchasing for my channel uh, and what I was purchasing for myself just to kind of again make the admin side easier. Uh, and this is also I'm not, I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a tax attorney, you know this is just what I did. But uh, I also purchased the Nucosis sunscreen separately because uh, I submit this for reimbursement to our FSA because it's a sunscreen. 
Uh, so I just did it separately just to make it easier because then I can claim whatever tax they apply. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, so this is the Kosas Dream Beam Comfy Smooth Sunscreen SPF 40. Kosas and I have a bit of a, a turbulent history, but uh, I have worn this a couple times and I really, I really do like it. I'm considering bringing it to London with me. Uh, this is SPF 40, does have the expiration date on the bottom, which is always nice. And it's a nice kind of compact little like pebble of a product. Uh, I think Taylor Wynn did point out that you only get 1.4 fluid ounce in this product compared to like the Super Goop, I think you get 1.7. So if you are comparing value and prices per ounce, um, that is worth noting. But if you haven't seen it already, it comes with a little nozzle. And even though it does have a slight tint, I don't find that it's too dark for my skin tone. Like once I kind of blend it in, it kind of shears out and you don't really see anything. So yeah, Taylor didn't like the smell. I, I think to me, she said it was rose. It could be, um, but to me it has kind of a nice, I don't know, floral powdery smell, kind of nostalgic for me. So, uh, so far so good. And I like that it's SPF 40, uh, because I've tried some other higher SPFs that haven't worked out as well, but so far that one is working out. Uh, another good one that I like is the Summer Fridays. I've had this for a while and it's down to about there. So uh, I would repurchase this one. This one is only SPF 30 though. And you do get more product. You get 50 mil in this as opposed to 40 mil. So really this is more travel friendly, although this is lighter because it's emptier. But uh, anyway, this is another good one. This one has more of a yellow tint to it. Although, like I said, once you kind of rub it in, it doesn't really show up. So uh, both of those are really good if you are fair complected like me. So, so far so good on this one. And as far as the kind of me order, I would call it, uh, this was the order I placed like at 12.01 Thursday night slash Friday morning when the sale opened. And it's the bulk of what I purchased during this sale. And I will say that they shipped it really fast. So because I, I think it was one of the first orders to be placed, I think I got this on Saturday, like the first weekend of the sale. So I was a little dismayed that they managed to fit everything in one of these kind of standard boxes because I felt like I bought a lot, but there you go. Uh, and they did have like the paper and everything kind of really strategically kind of smushed in there. So uh, no particular order. So I got the new Givenchy Prisma Libre Concealer. Uh, I got it in the lightest shade of N80. And I have worn this a couple times. I guess I was kind of curious about it and then I saw Khaki kind of go nuts for it. So I decided to pick it up. And it was interesting because I was kind of debating between this one and the uh, Dior concealer. And what ended up happening is uh, I purchased this from Sephora, uh, but then Ulta put out a, a $10 off of 40 coupon. And as you may know, Dior is now sold at Ulta. Uh, so I kind of, I guess, put off Dior for that reason. Cause I was like, well, I can get points and whatever at Ulta. Uh, but they put out that coupon and it applied to prestige. So this was exactly $40. So it was kind of ideal because that equates to 25% off as opposed to uh, 20. And the shades do look pretty similar. I will swatch them on my hand in a moment. I think you get the same amount of product in both of these. So I think I might do a side-by-side -side comparison of these. Uh, it was interesting because I think the Givenchy is newer. So a lot of people are kind of, you know, hyping it because it's new. Uh, that is what the doe foot looks like, by the way. And the Dior, as you may know, has been out before, but it was recently reformulated. So I had purchased the shades 0N and 1CR in the older one, and both of these were unfortunately a little too dark for me, so I never really kind of got along with them or bonded or whatever. I was pleased to see in this new formulation that they did release a lighter shade, so this is 00, and this is what I'm wearing today. It was the first time I put it on. It's actually even lighter than the Givenchy, if you can see that. So if you are super pale and you, you know, were disappointed that you were never able to find your shade in this uh, concealer, it may be worth looking at that shade. I think my initial 
impressions comparing the two are that I prefer the Dior. Uh, I saw that I think Michelle Wong talked about the new Givenchy and she said that she still liked uh, the Dior better. Um, so I'm happy I picked this up. It's interesting because even though these have the same amount of product and they're both very luxurious, the Dior is like discernibly heavier in the hand. Like it does feel more weighted. This feels a little bit more, I don't know, like plasticky, cheap, you know, feeling. So, so I might do a dedicated comparison video, um, but I feel like if you have maybe more mature, dry under eyes, the Dior might be a better, better way to go especially if you need a lighter a lighter shade. But I'll have to get back to you because I've only just used it today for the first time. Uh, let's see, I also got a fragrance. So I got the Jo Malone Sakura Cherry Blossom Cologne. Again, this was another video I had in mind to do that, you know, time might escape me, but uh, it comes with obviously the ribbon on the outside and then this is just like an outer sleeve. And then you have the box and I just thought this was a really cute like little pink bottle. Uh, I do really enjoy cherry blossom scents and if I can get this one out. I got the smaller of the larger sizes. They also have a, a duo of their like little kind of deluxe sizes that you can get for like $45. Uh, but that in addition to the Sakura scent has like I don't know, wood sage and sea salt or peony and blush suede, one of those that, I don't know, I get kind of tired of. Goodness, I feel like I'm giving birth to this right now. All right, uh, so that is what the bottle looks like. Very cute, it almost looks like a, a game piece or something. Uh, and then, yeah, I just decided to go for the smaller one. Um, and as I alluded to, I do live in the DC area and like cherry blossoms is always like a very popular thing uh, during the spring. I think this is a re-release that they've put out before. So if you've experienced this in previous years, I don't think this scent is anything new, but it is, it is a nice kind of fresh, fresh scent. In terms of value, again, this is a video Maybe I'll do it next year when it makes more sense. But in terms of value, I would probably recommend going for the Guerlain because uh, this is their cherry blossom. It's the Flora Teresa, the Aqua Allegoria line. And I think this is technically, uh, this is a cologne and this is an Eau de Toilette. So I don't know how those kind of compare in terms of concentration, uh, but you do get a lot more in this bottle. I'd say this one is more strongly floral as opposed to the Jo Malone is a little bit fresher. So, so that's maybe something to consider. Although I think this one's kind of available all the time versus being more seasonal. Uh, so yeah, got, got myself a little Jo Malone fragrance. And on that note, I did see that Sephora also has the, I'm just going to call it the Highland collection, I think is what it is. Uh, but I picked up this little discovery set from the Jim Loan website. So unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to film a video about this collection before the sale ends, but if you are contemplating purchasing one of these um, scents, let me know and I'll try to give you my thoughts. Uh, we have Wild, Achillea, Mallow on the Moor, Highland Heather, and Melancholy Thistle are the fragrances. So anyway, that is kind of in the queue. Uh, and then what's this? Okay, so this is the foundation I'm wearing. I got the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in 110 Alabaster. Uh, so this is a foundation that had been on my wish list for years. Amanda Z had always spoken really highly of this and I know she likes the reboot as well. So I kind of, I guess, trust her uh, opinions, recommendations. Uh, so I'm wearing this and so far, I like it. I, I made the mistake of not applying a primer before I applied this. So that's a step I usually take because I have dry skin, but you know, so far I think it's, it's looking pretty good. I also might have applied too much. Uh, I'm not in love with this kind of dispenser because I feel like it always looks messy, but basically you can twist it to lock it and then twist it to dispense it and then you push down. You know, the cap just feels a little kind of plasticky cheap to me. So 
I guess I would prefer just kind of your standard cap with a pump like that. But anyway, uh, I'll have to play around with that more. But that was, again, one of those products that had been on my wish list for a really long time. And so it wouldn't have been like a write-off per se. It was just something I wanted to try. So anyway, uh, another product is the, I'm not going in any particular order here. Uh, I got another Gucci blush. So I got the shade 01 Silky Rose because I guess I'd had the rosy, the rosy beige, is it called? Yeah. Um, so I picked this up. It might have been in the fall, I think, uh, was when these came out. So yeah, I picked up this and I do really love it. And I love this formula. It's very kind of sheer and skin like. Uh, and so I wanted to pick up one that was a little bit more, I don't know, spring summery. So I got 01 Silky Rose and the the gentleman they used to model this blush it just gave me again like this 18th century french court vibes the way that he looked and i just i don't know it called to me so uh this is what i'm wearing today which looks like so um so i have that mostly here i put a little bit of the rosy beige on the back parts of the cheek and uh, some bronzer as well uh so yes yeah, so it's just a really nice kind of beautiful skin like look very natural i find it interesting because i kept going back and forth between this one and the radiant pink shade uh which are obviously different shades but looking at the models and looking at the shades in store and swatching them like they look pretty pretty darn near identical so let me know if you have both shades and if you feel like they they look different on your skin but yeah, I kept going back and forth between this one and the Radiant Pink, and um, ultimately I settled on this one. So I, I think I think that might be the end of my Gucci blush purchasing, but we'll see. I'm not I'm not a huge like apricot orange blush person, so I don't really know if anything else would really speak to me. Uh, I did also get a brush from Sephora. I got the number. 47. This is actually a foundation brush, but it's one that State of Kate had used for uh, cream blushes like the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Matte Beauty Blush Wands. So this is the shade Pillow Talk, which I had purchased from the Charlotte Tilbury website because it's exclusive for some unknown reason. And I've used this before. I like it, but I'm not like totally in love. But the way that uh, State of Kate used this brush just looked really kind of appealing so I think that added a little something I'm trying to think in my head what I want to pack for London uh, so we'll see what kind of makes the cut uh, but yeah so far so good and of course you know with the Sephora collection you get 30% off which is always nice I did already powder and everything so uh, but yeah so far so good on that I I thought about picking up another shade of the Charlotte Tilbury, but um, I'll probably just wait on that. I did see that Charlotte Tilbury just launched a makeup bag that looks really cool. And if our trip were further away, I might have picked it up to take with me because I'm trying to be a little bit better about not taking as much this time. I filmed a video telling you what I packed last time and I'm trying to be a little bit more discerning. But anyway, I didn't want to worry about it. Uh, so... What was I talking about? Blush brushes. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that um, it kind of follows, it's similar, I guess, in theory to like the BK 101, which is what I use to blend out my contour and everything. Um, it's a little thinner, obviously. And this is the concealer brush. Uh, so I think I still wanna pick up the, is it the 109 from BK, which is their kind of, intermediate step between these two. I think I still want to pick those up and again uh, be on the lookout for I think a Mother's Day sale from BK. I think they usually do that so I might I might try to pick that up then. Uh, so that was the brush. Uh, I also got this was also in the sales section and this had been on my radar but I didn't want to pay full price for it. Uh, this was actually a holiday set of candles. So uh, this was from the brand Boy Smells and it was their like holiday variety pack. <laughs> it says, what's life without a little variety? So uh, this might not be something I kind of get into in the near future, 
Really, really beautiful packaging though. If, if you wanna make a mental note for this upcoming holiday season, uh, I think they do something like this every year and you can find them sometimes on like Nordstrom Rack. Um, so it has this kind of cover and then it has these three little votives here. So what really called to me was this broken rosary um, as a, a former Catholic, I guess. Uh, and it has a nice kind of golden interior. Um, so it says cedar wood, rose, cardamom, moss, cinnamon leaf, musk and orris, bois. Oh, is it just repeating? Gotcha. So it's in English and then it's in, like in French. So cedar wood, rose, cardamom, moss, cinnamon leaf, musk and orris. So one of your really kind of intense rose scents. And I haven't burned these to kind of see how they do. Um, this one is Figuar, maybe. I'm not sure how you say it. Uh, this one is fig leaves, black pepper, lavender, cardamom, pepperwood, and fir balsam. That one's nice and fresh. I'm not a huge fan of really strong fig scents, but I think that has a lot more going on. Uh, and this one is incensorial. And this one is orange peel, incense, cardamom, blonde tobacco, salted amber, and suede. So that one's really nice as well. I, I always love winter candles. I think those are my favorites. Um, so yeah, very, very excited to be able to try these. And I think this set might still be in stock last time I checked. And they also had larger sizes of these candles as well. So uh, definitely worth looking into. I haven't explored too much from this brand uh, because they have a lot of like cannabis or hemp uh, inspired scents and I don't have any moral objection to that. I just don't personally like the smell. So anyway, uh, but those are all really nice. Uh, so also from State of Kate's recommendations and I think a lot of people love these like Amanda Z and uh, Khaki, uh, the Ami Cole lip treatment oils and I kept going back and forth between this shade, which is what I have on. This is the bright pink shade of Smitten. Uh, I'll just show you kind of how this looks now that it's worn off. So it does give you that nice pop of color. Um, so that is Smitten and I, th I agree with what I think State of Kate said is that it does feel like it's kind of gripping to your lips, like it's not gonna kind of move all of your face. Uh, like the Tower 28 lip jellies or whatever they're called, I think are a lot thinner. So, you know, you do run that risk a little bit more. But yeah, that is Smitten. And I couldn't decide between that one and Bliss. So in the end, I got both. <laughs> I think Taylor Wynn also talked about these, but she, I think she layered them because she didn't like how, how Smitten looked on its own. All right, so applying Bliss. Definitely a more natural shade. I think, I don't know. It depends what you want. I, th I think the Smitten one is a little bit more fun, but if you want something that you can just kind of throw on, then maybe Bliss would be better. Uh, and I know they also have a clear one and that kind of brown shade, but I didn't think I'd get as much use out of the brown one. Uh, okay, so we have the Milk uh, Contour Stick. Another product I think Taylor Wynn picked up and Teresa recommended on sale. And I was kind of nervous to use this for the first time because um, like Taylor and I think a lot of people have said that this little plastic cap has a tendency to kind of take a lot of the product with it when you remove it. Um, so I guess the, the chunk it took out of mine is relatively small uh, compared to some people's. And I did try to twist it up a little bit to see if I could pry it off better, uh, but that ended up a little bit is kind of smushed into the cap, nothing too terrible. Uh, but it is unfortunate when people are already complaining about the amount of product you're getting that you then lose some of it just by virtue of the packaging. So it seems like Milk could maybe rethink this packaging or I don't know, the formulation. Although I did use it today and it did blend out really nicely. Uh, so you get 5.7 grams in this versus 7.10 grams in the Fenty. So maybe not as high a discrepancy as you would think just based on the sizes of the of the components. Uh, so I think I might take this to London. It's a very kind of small, travel-friendly 
um, component, although this is not terrible. Uh, and this, I think, blended out a little bit easier as well. Uh, so anyway, uh, I got that. I didn't get the Say Bronzer though. Uh, I think I'd mentioned in one video that I was thinking of getting both this and the Say Bronzer. Uh, Say is another brand that's kind of on my I want to do a full face video list. Uh, so I think that's going to happen later in the year. And on that topic, I did finally get the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. I got it in the shade 12C. Uh, so Rare Beauty is another brand on my list. So Rare Beauty, Say, and Makeup by Mario, I think are my kind of three top contenders. Thinking I'm doing KVD as well. I have a Mac video coming up, uh, but anyway. Yeah, so I got this, I haven't used it yet, uh, but I did swatch it in store several times and I thought 12C was gonna be the best shade for me. So um, I do kind of like how sleek and compact this is. So I have to try that out. The tinted moisturizer seems to be more popular than their like true foundation product. Uh, and then the last couple samples for this order, uh, I just got another Seven Virtues, and then I got the uh, Layla Lou perfume by Rosie Jane. Uh, so that was it for the kind of me order for Sephora. And I think working my way backwards, this this I have a bit of a bone to pick with Sephora. So uh, I got the pep. Oh no. Okay. Uh, so I got the Pat McGrath Star Wars palette. This is the the golden one. Uh, so C3PO, obviously. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, I guess, casual Star Wars fan. I'm not obsessive or anything. Uh, I did really like the form factor of this palette uh, because I purchased the two that came out with the holiday collection. And so I saw this go down to... I want to say it might have been 25 or something when I purchased it and I was kind of debating because it was before the sale started. I was debating whether to just wait but because it had been marked down I was worried that it would go out of stock or whatever so I decided to go ahead and grab it and there was also like a gift with purchase I was kind of interested in. Uh, so I got this for yeah, it was marked down to about $25, 20 cents, whatever. So that was definitely better than I think like the 32 it was originally. And I also saw, I was 36. I also saw like Alicia Archer talk about one of these shades being really nice. I think it was Tatooine. I think it was that one. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, and I, I just like the box as well. I love it when brands do this kind of cardboard sticking out. Pretty cheesy, but anyway. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and pick it up and I'm basically wearing these two shades and then this one. So obviously that's like my crease shade. That's in the inner like third corner, etc., and that's on the outer third. So I didn't wear those two shades. Uh, but what really kind of grinds my gears uh, is that it's now back up to full price. So. So Sephora sometimes puts products on sale for a limited period of time, as in the case with the Mario product. Uh, but like 20% off of 36 is 29-ish, I think, if I'm doing my math correctly, 28, 29. Uh, so more than what it was marked down to before the sale. So it's not like they were trying to compensate for the sale happening. It was actually more expensive during the sale than it would have been beforehand. So anyway, I, I think that's kind of crappy of them. Uh, I also got the Skylar Pink Canyon uh, fragrance. Uh, I did also get a like sampler set of Skylar fragrances from Ipsy recently, so I might film a video about that. Uh, I just saw Lauren May Beauty, but it was on her fragrance channel, I think, um, talk about this. And unfortunately, this is a rollerball and not like a spray. So not my favorite kind of delivery mechanism, but it is a nice citrus scent. I do kind of gravitate more towards citrus scents in the summer. Um, so this has notes of grapefruit, pink salt, and cedar. 
and this was a five mil or 0.16 fluid ounce sample. So got that. And then my normal samples, I got the Toka Florence, which I've purchased a full size of long, long time ago. Uh, it says Italian bergamot, crushed violet petals and rich gardenia and sophisticated blonde woods. So yeah, that one. And then also Ellis Brooklyn Myth. It says the unforgettable white musk. So again, just kind of pick the best of what is available. Uh, so also before the sale, I did end up buying the Kaoli fragrance that everyone is losing their mind over. Uh, so this is the Yum Pistachio Gelato, and I am not normally a gourmand fragrance person, so uh, I did smell this in store before I purchased it. And again, it's not something I usually go for, but I think it has, it's not like a sickeningly sweet gourmand. It has like a kind of powdery freshness. It has some citrus. I get like a pineapple note from this. And yeah, the notes are pistachio gelato, hazelnut, sweet rum, whipped cream, marshmallow, and cotton candy. Yeah, I think I get like some marshmallow, but you know, it's not a very heavily, I guess, nutty fragrance. There was a dessert my mother used to make for, my mother, my mom, <laughs> used to make for uh, Thanksgiving called Watergate salad, which was basically like pistachio pudding, Cool Whip, crushed pineapple and nuts. Uh, so very kind of 70s style dessert. She doesn't make it anymore because no one really goes for it, but um, that is what this reminds me of. So let me know if anyone else has experienced Watergate salad um, and if they've also experienced that fragrance, if, if they agree with me. Uh, so yeah, so that was the main thing. I also got a little sample of one of the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Dewy Liquid Blushes in the shade Hope. Um, and this is honestly as much as I will probably ever need of this particular shade. Uh, so yeah, so I decided to get that. I also have a few other minis of this formula in my collection. I've never purchased like a full size, but you know, I'll take I'll take the, uh, the sample. And then uh, of course we have samples. I have the Maison Louis Marie number 12 Boost. Boosfall? Uh, it says a botanical tradition since 1792. It's named after their mother's hometown. Okay. So Italian bergamot, Valencia orange, and white ginger flower. That could be nice. Uh, and then I also got the uh, sampler card of the Rare Beauty tinted moisturizer. Uh, this was before I purchased the full size, but I figured I might as well pick up some alternatives to compare it to. All right, as we continue to move backwards in time, if you're still with me, uh, this order was during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. And originally I was thinking of filming a combined Ulta and Sephora haul, but for purposes of the Sephora sale, I just wanted to focus on Sephora. Uh, but anyway, uh, as you probably know, Sephora usually price matches the items they sell that are on sale at Ulta. And so uh, they had the KVD, tattoo pencil liners on sale at Ulta for 50% off. So Sephora price match them. But when things are marked down at Sephora, you can also use like those deluxe sample codes. So I decided to purchase it from Sephora. Uh, I don't recommend these. And I thought about returning them. If I don't return them soon. It would just be for uh, store credit. Uh, but I got three of their kind of more colorful options because I have plenty of like brown and black liners. Uh, so I got the shades for Detta Green, Blue Ashes, and Diox Purple. And as you'll see in the demo, like these, these are just not good. Uh, I would recommend certainly not paying full price for these. Uh, they're the kind that you twist up. And really, I think I just prefer something that you sharpen. I think the blue is probably the best out of all of them, to be honest. Uh, but in general, I just find that these do not transfer well and they just are like very waxy, like in a crayon type way and not in a, you know, creamy sort of way. So uh, if you want to purchase a good eyeliner from, I mean, maybe they just need to be warmed up. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, if you want to purchase a good eyeliner from Sephora, I would recommend, I guess, either the Charlotte Tilbury and Barbarella Brown or, yeah, the purple is just kind of
kind of sad. Uh, you can see it kind of skipping over the lines in my hand. So, uh, don't, don't recommend these, but I don't know. I have them now. Uh, and like I said, I might do a full face of KVD at some point. I haven't picked up their new foundation because I wasn't sure it would actually be good on my uh, dry skin. Yeah, I mean, my, my favorite is the Victoria Beckham, but if you do want to pick up a good one, uh, like the Makeup by Mario in, I don't know, this brush doesn't do anything for me, but uh, their Perfect Brown liner is pretty good. If you like a nice creamy formula that actually shows up. I've heard people say good things about the Pat McGrath ones, but I haven't tried those. I mean, the, the Urban Decay ones are always a classic if you haven't tried those before. Like this is the shade Mushroom. It's also available at Ulta though, I'm pretty sure. So um, Urban Decay is always a good bet. Some of, the, some of the Charlotte Tilbury ones are kind of hit or miss. This is the Barbarella Brown. So yeah, I would recommend those over at the KVD if you were remotely considering purchasing them. And uh, again, got more samples. So Rare Beauty again. And then I also got a Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt clone, even though it's not my favorite, but you know, I got that. Uh, the deluxe sample I got was the Way Body Cream in St. Bart's. Uh, so I hadn't tried this scent before, so I decided to try it. I know a lot of people go gaga for the uh, St. Bart's body scrub. I love the body scrub in the like traditional Melrose, but I mean, this is nice. If, if you like a good kind of beachy summery scent, um, it's definitely worth looking into. Um, so I picked that up and I got my birthday gift because my birthday was in April. Uh, so this one includes a couple things I will probably take with me to London. Uh, we have the Honey Potion Plus. I don't know if I've tried the Honey Potion Plus. I know I've tried the Honey Potion, but anyway, a uh, little sample of that. And then uh, the Green Clean is a great makeup remover. So I got that. I thought about purchasing one of these, perhaps an unscented one in the sale, but um, I'm perfectly happy to use this one. It kind of smells like, I don't know, like key lime pie to me. Uh, I would prefer to have my skincare be unscented, but that's fine. Uh, and then I also got their, what is this called? Honey Halo, uh, which I have gone through a full size of before and really enjoy. It's a nice, rich moisturizer. So uh, yeah, I think I might be taking that with me, although this isn't like the most travel friendly packaging, but it's all right. Uh, so that was it for that order. And then more orders that, you know, didn't go as well as they could have. Uh, so I initially purchased the new Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow Moisturizing Skin Tint is what they call it. And this has both some chemical and uh, mineral based sunscreens. I initially got the shade Cream Puff and I think I put a post up on my Instagram of how frustrated I was by how Too Faced was naming their shades and how difficult it was to find your right shade. Uh, so I originally got this. Again, I think I might return this if I can. It will probably just be for store credit. Uh, but this is definitely too deep for me. And spoiler alert, I don't... I don't actually like the formula. I don't think it's moisturizing. I don't think it's good for dry skin. I think it looks really dry and crepey by the end of the day. Uh, but before I think I had tried it on my face, I did actually purchase the same product in store uh, in their lightest shade of cloud. So I thought about doing a comparison between this and the Dior. I just heard Stephanie Marie say that the Dior face and body might be reformulated, which would be interesting. Uh, that's not like my holy grail foundation or anything, but it's one that people compared this to because they look similar in the packaging. Although, like as far as like a squeezy bottle with a nozzle, I mean, I don't know how innovative or you know clever Dior was being with that package. So anyway, I got that and Let's see, again, more Rare Beauty. And uh, I got the Kerastase, like, purple shampoo and what is this? It's a rinse of some kind? Conditioner, maybe? I don't know. I just picked that up. 
And then I got also from kind of their price matching of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. This is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blush in Calm My Blush. I could probably put some on without being too clown face. Haven't tried this particular one yet. So packaging is not anything special. It is nice that you can kind of see what the product is through the like 50 shades of mauve. So yeah, I mean, I kind of picked a shade that I thought I could get some use out of. So just wanted to try out that formula. And then I also got as my deluxe sample, the perfect Marc Jacobs Eau de Toilette. I think it's just perfect, right? These bottles are always so cute. I do kind of collect these and I have a couple of videos on my channel of like my mini perfume collection if you'd like to check those out. Uh, so yeah, so that's it for that. We're down to the last box here. Uh, so I got some like acne patches, I guess. Uh, so these are the Focus Spot Blemish Micro Tip Patches from Dr. Dart. Uh, this is another thing you can get your FSA to cover if you have an FSA. So uh, basically they're good for like really kind of deep blemishes that are not quite ready to emerge. You know what I mean? Uh, so these are really good. I just saw that I think Zit Sticka is coming out with like, I don't know, super powerful ones. Uh, but these are nice because they are all like individually wrapped. Uh, I've tried the ones from like Hero, I think it is, and they're not individually wrapped. And I just find that, I don't know, this is, this feels a little bit more hygienic when you're kind of pushing something into your skin. Uh, they don't hurt or anything like that. But uh, again, if you do have kind of those deep, more cystic acne kind of spots that you need, you need to break out the big guns. These are good. You only get six and I think they're about like 20 something a pack. So they're kind of expensive per patch. So you kind of want to use them judiciously. Uh, but anyway, picked up some of those and then I got this Sephora contour powder and I'm a little annoyed because Sephora had placed all of their kind of blushes and contour powders on sale. And so I think I had added one to my cart. But when I actually checked out, it was back to full price and I hadn't noticed. So, so a little irritated that I paid full price for this. Although I don't think I could have gotten this for 30% off during the sale because they've basically repackaged these. I don't know if they're reformulated uh, and they don't have this particular contour shade, at least not yet. Uh, if they do have it in the future though, I would recommend checking it out. I think it was still only like 14 bucks or something. If I can open it. Yeah. So super, super cool tone powder. Uh, and I have used this before, so it wasn't, it didn't look like dirt on me or anything like that, but, uh, yeah, I was able to use it and it did have a nice contour. So I would say keep your eyes peeled for this. If you do enjoy a true, like cool toned contour, I'm not sure if they'll bring that back or not. Uh, but anyway, and then let's see, I got a couple of just normal samples. I got the Tom Ford Bitter Peach. Always nice when you get like a Tom Ford fragrance sample in the like traditional list of samples. And then I just picked up the Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum Intense. So lots of fragrance samples. And then the deluxe samples, I got the Jo Malone Nectarine Blossom and Honey. Uh, this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of, you know, it would be in that two pack. Um, so I do like this. I generally like a good floral, not always a super heavy white floral, like a Jasmine or a Gardenia scent, but I do like that one. Uh, and then there's the body cream in peony and blush suede, which personally I think is overrated. Um, but anyway, got that. And then just a few more orders. So I picked up the Rare Beauty bronzer stick in the shade Bright Side, which always reminds me of, is it Life of Brian? Uh, but anyway, I'd had the Happy Soul shade. So I'll just swatch these two. I am wearing Bright Side today. It does have a very satisfying click to it, so I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I actually went a little deeper in the shade. It's not the lightest one 
But those are Happy Soul and Bright Side next to each other. So I never picked up the whatever the lightest shade was because it looked very yellow. Yeah, I think it's not, it's not like a true contour, but it's definitely getting closer to, I think a bronzer shade that looks good on me. Like my platonic ideal is still the Gucci bronzer, which is obviously a different formulation, but yeah, we're, we're getting more, getting closer to that anyway. Picked that up and I am wearing it today in addition to the Milk Contour. I need to have makeup remover, hold on. Okay, so now that I've removed some swatches, uh, I'll quickly swatch Happy Soul and Bright Side. Someone on one of Khaki's videos requested a comparison swatch, I think of the Makeup by Mario product. So there you can see the Milk in Toasted, the uh, Rare Beauty in Bright Side and Happy Soul. Yeah, don't, don't love this packaging. So this is another great kind of like cream bronzer option. Yeah, definitely, definitely kind of different in tone. Uh, but yeah, anyway, those are some comparison swatches for you guys. I also got a sample of the Peter Thomas Roth primer, which I've been too chicken to try. Uh, this is their Instant Firm Firm X, maybe, no filter primer. Haven't tried that yet, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I also got some samples of the Glove Recipe Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask. I have used this before, it's pretty nice. And the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Liquid and Cream. I think this has some like fragrance ingredients I'm not too crazy about, but anyway, I got the sample of that. All right, three more orders. So this one should be pretty straightforward because I already filmed a video about it. Uh, this is the Kosas Sunshow Bronzer in the shade Waves. So I'll refer you to my video. Obviously I still have it in my hand, so I haven't returned it. Uh, but yeah, I got that and this isn't a shimmery bronzer, this NARS one. Uh, I didn't get this from Sephora. I got it from the NARS website, but I just kind of threw it in here on the off chance that I wanted to talk about it, which I obviously am talking about it. But yeah, I have some swatches on my Instagram of different bronzers because I've been trying to find some good, maybe more affordable alternatives to this one, maybe more travel friendly as well. Um, so, so far, no luck, but I've, I've been seeing what I can find. I uh, also got the Glossier Future Dew, which again has some fragrance ingredients I'm not crazy about, but it is a very nice kind of moisturizing base if you have dry skin. And again, more Dr. Jart and the Milk Hydro Grip samples. Uh, last two orders are all sunscreen. So I got some sunscreen minis, I guess, in anticipation of my trip. Uh, so I got a sample or a mini, I guess, of the Tatcha Silk Sunscreen. And this is where I can tell you, I bought the full size once upon a time and you can see it's in this plastic bag. I really, I just need to toss this because it's, it's gross and like the packaging is not great. So I picked up this mini on the off chance the mini packaging would be better. I mean, it is it is really cute. I'll give them that. You don't get a lot here. Same general idea as the bigger one. Uh, I think I think Jenna Fraze also had an issue with her like full size leaking. So I, I don't know if I'll be taking that. Uh, I also got the Josie Marin Get Even Sun Milk SPF 33. This one is like in a little kind of glass pump. So maybe not the best for travel in terms of weight. Uh, and then let's see, I got the Say Sun Visor, which is in a pretty compact tube. I mean, all of these are pretty, you don't get a lot of product. And depending on how long your trip is, like it's probably just as easy to take this and not worry about running out. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I did get the uh, Rose Ink Solar Power Luminous SPF 30 Serum. Uh, this comes in like a little dropper and I think, I think I might actually bring this as more of a 
like primer that also has sunscreen in it as opposed to like my dedicated sunscreen uh, because uh, I'll quickly just tell you I got I think some like a Briagio mask which is always good for travel and then this I think I got this from Sephora this B12 awake patch I might take that as well for jet lag. <laughs> uh, let's see, and then, yeah, I don't think I got a deluxe sample with that order. I think it was uh, you used a code to get bonus points on a certain, you know, spend or whatever. But anyway, the last order to share with you um, that I purchased is this Rose Ink Solar Power Luminous SPF 30 Serum. This is strictly mineral-based, it's zinc oxide, and I don't think this was a brand new product, but I think it was new to Sephora. Uh, so another glass bottle, kind of heavy or whatever. It has one of these type dispensers with the pump. Probably not my favorite, but it, you know, kind of feels luxe or whatever. Uh, yeah, and I like this, again, don't necessarily love the dispensing mechanism, but uh, I like this as a primer to add some additional, yeah, you can see I'm not getting any. Uh, to get some additional hydration and sun coverage. So I tried this first and then I went ahead and bought the mini as well. So I think partly because with the dispensing mechanism, I feel like I'm not getting enough product for a sunscreen. That makes me not want to use it as my dedicated sunscreen, but um, it does it does add a nice bit of like hydration and everything to the skin for like priming. So uh, that is kind of how I'm thinking I will use the mini. Uh, but yeah, I, I do I do like this product. Again, if you just want kind of a straight up sunscreen, I would probably recommend the Kosas over it. Uh, it's easier to get out. It's a greater SPF and you actually get more product in this than you do in this. This is only an ounce, so. I'm not sure what other like skincare benefits they say that the rose ink has or anything, but whatever. Uh, okay, and then finally, with that order, I uh, got another Rosie Jane perfume, I guess. And I feel like my samples might be a little messed up. Anyway, I have this Nectarine Blossom and Honey sample. Uh, I think I might have gotten an RMS Beauty mascara sample at one point. Uh, and then finally, the deluxe sample with that rose ink Sunscreen was the Rose Blush Perfume from uh, Jo Malone. And this was a like limited release scent. I think they bring it back from time to time, but um, yeah, I do love a good rose scent. So happy to get one of these as a deluxe sample whenever I can. And I think this is what I'm going to be taking to London with me as kind of my fragrance. I think I'm going to limit myself to one this time as opposed to like I don't know, the five I brought last time. So anyway, that is my marathon of a Sephora haul. Thank you so much if you made it to the end and you watched all of it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, especially before the Sephora sale ends, and I will do my best to help you out. But anyway, that's going to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.